Hey guys, Jackson Savvy here. And today we're going to do things a little different. Uh, we're going to do this stream style. And we're going to talk about some I picked up just a while back. I picked up a Raspberry Pi 3, the B+. And the one on your screen right now is the exact one I got off of Amazon. Now, I've always wanted to play with one of these. Any tech guy usually does. But the reason I picked up one is a while back I gave away my Steam link to a guy I stream with sometimes, Anxiety Bytes. And uh, the Steam link was really good at what it did, but I really didn't need it at the time. And now I was wanting something that does that and a little bit more. You know, play the Steam games on the TV, uh, browse if I want to install different, uh, I guess, like Plex. Cody, different kind of media centers. So I decided to go ahead and go with this one right here. And it's an $80 little all in one that has, you know, the board, the case, the heat sinks, for some reason, a card reader, along with the power supply. Now, usually you've got to buy all this stuff separate. So I just want the quick and easy. It even has a preloaded uh, operating system. Well, actually a couple to choose from, but we'll get into that. We'll go ahead and jump into the video, the unboxing. We'll kind of walk through it here. And when I first got it, it actually turned out really nice. I was surprised with the packaging. It's got the 1.4 gigahertz processor in it. Now with these, we're usually worrying a little bit about the heat dissipation, throttling, things like that. So coming up first, and I've got this in two times speed so if it looks really weird that's why we didn't want to make this too long and drawn out it's got 2.4 and 5 gigahertz wi-fi built in as well as bluetooth so we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a bit so with it having all of that along with ethernet and the operating system to where you can choose everything was just kind of a nice tight package you got the sandus 32 gigabyte card it's actually a pretty high-end memory card, fast enough for what we'll be doing. Right there, you're seeing the copper heat sinks, and I might upgrade it at a later time just to have like a little bit more cooling, a little bit of overhead. I don't really see a need to overclock it. If I start doing that, I really need to go to uh, uh, something like a mini PC or a smaller build. There's actually another Raspberry Pi variant that one of the big dogs makes that, uh, is a lot better processor but don't think we're quite at that point yet let me see everything it comes with the instructions which if you do this i do say that you ought to read them because most of it's straightforward but the dumb little nuanced stuff is what ended up getting me so you're going to see the board here and once i get it flipped over you can see four usb ports ethernet hdmi 3.5 millimeter jack and what we get right here is the actual uh, micro USB for power. So as we're going through, we'll stop right there. This little chip right here, which actually I think we'll throw on. Oh, don't even have it installed right now. This little chip right here is actually the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi. Uh, this one's the actual processor. And, you know, I can't remember right offhand if this one's for Ethernet or not. But we'll let it go through here. Because there's, with the heat sinks, if you don't have at least something on it, if you're going to be running this thing hard at all, you're going to start throttling really bad. And with these being copper, I felt like it was a good little starter kit to start out. That's the case. Now, let me stop it right there. Okay, there were a lot of cuts and everything in all this video. So, what you're seeing right there is the end support of me being, or the end all be all of me being a dumbass. Because I put that thing in upside down and it fit absolutely perfectly several times. And I'm sitting there messing with it and finally figured it out by looking where the SD card placement is, where it goes. So yeah, I actually cut quite a bit of that out because I was putting that in upside down. And the other thing, and take a look here. If we go back over to that listing, see how that case is? Scroll down the listing, even take a look through any of it. Or even actually go through some of the pictures here. This one. See how it's a heat dissipating case, got the ventilation holes. Just pay close attention to this one, number three. See that little lip around there? There's like a little space all around the edge. 
Well, I actually cut out about three, four minutes. And that's the board in the case of me putting that top cover on and not understanding why it wouldn't snap down. So there's the SD card. That's what led me to actually put it in the correct way. Something so simple, totally forget about software and everything was easier than remembering how this thing went at first. But yes, the little lip that we see right there, that's to help with heat. I even took a razor knife and thought, oh, maybe I ought to cut off a little bit of this so it seals down good. Maybe the mold was bad. No, <laughs> I finally got my dumb ass because the instructions don't show that part. They're kind of generic, but very well done still. So I went back to that Amazon picture and checked it out. And this is the initial setup. Originally, I did this all over uh, my Elgato, straight to the computer. And installed Raspbian. And we can actually go back a little, just so y'all can see. After I connect to Wi-Fi, you got a lot of stuff preloaded. So if you're one, the easier way out, like I was on this one, um, one of these kits like this usually has quite a bit of these already installed, loaded. You can pick what you want. Like I just went with the Raspbian. They have uh, the full light and there's a couple other versions on here, but uh, you can actually put on whatever you want, of course, onto a Raspberry Pi. But uh, I looked up on the Steam link. It worked really well with this. And this is sped up probably 3000%. It was, I'd say a good 10, 15 minutes, maybe longer. So if we go back, look real quick, the initial setup, since I've got it running so fast, is just clicking what operating system, connecting to Wi-Fi. Then it does all of the updates, installation, and everything. You have some more options there too. And this is the, I guess, initial setup after you pick your operating system. Uh, kind of like when you get to your Windows screen. You're doing your country, time zone, all that good stuff. And I've got it all of this sped up so we don't drag it out too much. So after setting location, uh, this part's actually a password for the Pi itself. There's a default password for anything administrative you need. And the part I kicked out because for some reason it did not uh, capture correctly is after we did that initial uh, choosing of the operating system. And we'll stop right there. See how that's a little cut off on the screen. I still had this going through my Elgato at the moment. When we did the initial setup, uh, and at one point when I put on the sudo, you open a command line, and it's a lot like Windows, except for you got a lot of commands with sudo to give privileges for Linux. There's only two commands to add the Steam Link package, and it's just like the Steam Link app on your phone. So uh, the reason I cut that part of this out and you'll just see it installed is because it actually cut off the screen for the uh, Elgato display capture. Now right here, we're, um, it's going to look a little strange. This is actually the 50 inch uh, 4K TV above my bed. It's the one I got for 230 bucks at Best Buy. Now what I actually tried at first was taking my Note 8 and uh, kind of like a OTG cable and I hooked it to the TV because the Steam Link ran great on my phone, even over five gigahertz Wi-Fi, like no lag, no nothing. So I tried first hooking my phone into this TV and all oh, the lag, the latency, like even for, you know, I wasn't going to be playing competitive games on here, but it was bad. So I don't plan to play them even on this, even if I hardwire it, but this is what the desktop looks like. And you have your command line here, folders. This is actually a Chromium web browser at the top. And then when you click the top left, it brings up all your options and everything, but we're not too worried about that. Just looking into the Steam Link app. And like I said, two lines of code installed. And uh, the other parts I don't put in here, because they're just kind of uh, boring, is when you first set this up, you'll get on your computer um, this thing will give you a code. You enter it in your computer to say, hey, it's cool to connect. And really, that's it, guys. This thing's going to open in big, big picture mode, just like a Steam Link. Or if you've ever used anything else that pulls from it. Uh, the controller, I'm close enough that my Xbox controller hooked to the computer is going to work fine. So I'm running this with my Xbox controller right now. 
Um, it goes to this big picture mode. You've got all your options. And Steam, the Steam Link is something you can get into a little farther. So one thing I want to stress here is that I went through actually quite a lot. And sorry if it's loud, guys. It's actually storming really hard all of a sudden. But I went back and forth through resolutions and looking through uh, what this Raspberry Pi could handle, what the Steam Link app really did. And the resolution looks really good. This is only 1080p. And with a 4K TV, you know, it upscales it. But the one thing I did notice, and uh, I also cut that out, is even on 5 gigahertz with a high speed download, high upload, I've got a 400 by 40 connection. I was still seeing a lot of stuttering. So if y'all get one of these, if you don't have access to an external Wi-Fi antenna, uh, then you really need to hardwire them. Right now, this is running off of uh, the 5 gigahertz internal Wi-Fi on the Raspberry Pi. And it is going to look a little funny running, you know, a video at 30 hertz with the game run at 60 hertz. But uh, it's it's great, guys. It really is. So even for a little kit like this, if you're wanting to stream some non-competitive games, because I did try Apex, and just that little touch, even hardwired, that little touch is enough to really screw you up. But uh, games like this, like Bayonetta is actually kind of fast-paced, but where that touch of latency isn't going to make a difference, it's a really good deal. And I didn't want to run a cord all the way from my PC over to the TV, so, yeah, if you don't want a Steam Link, you don't want to spend the money on an NVIDIA Shield, um, this is the next best bet. And if you want it, you know, on the big screen, it works really well, but it's going to be 1080p max pretty much. And uh, you're going to want to make sure you got heat sinks like that kit has. But, guys, it ran great. Uh, just thought I'd show you a real fast unboxing setup and what it leads to. There's plenty more we can do with this. Um, from a network perspective, yeah, I'd rather have it hardwired, but if I can't, it'll work fine. But guys, thanks for watching. If y'all want to see some more stuff like this, hit me up in the comments, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Y'all have a good one.